So in this video you will join myself and my son as we travel over 330 miles from Debden in North Essex down to Perrinporth in Cornwall. We are today halfway through day one in the beautiful rolling countryside of North Essex in Hertfordshire. We're going to show you all the nice places to stay, all the nice places to go through and a few tips and hints along the way to make the ride even more enjoyable. It can be a bit daunting, I've done this ride a few times myself, first time for the sun. So first tip would be loads of water. Make sure you have loads of fluid with you on your bikes. We have two water bottles each and we've nearly done both of those already and we've covered less than 25 miles. Lots of water. So I'm going to show you how to do this successfully, places to go to and a few tips and hints along the way. But uh, Watnut Stone is that way and Oliver and myself, they are extremely loaded up bikes, they need to head on that way. So let's continue on to Cornwall, see what we see. That way Oliver. End of day one, we've left countryside like that behind us, which is more like East Anglia, and we're heading into countryside like that, which is the Chiltern Hills. We've arrived at Ivinghoe Town Farm. Lovely place, isn't it? Look, loads of space, good showers, good food just down the road. Tick, tick, tick. And we're away from the main road. Good night's sleep coming up. Tick, another one. And, uh, yeah, what can I say about this ride so far? Oliver's done really well. He's away having a shower now. So a couple of little tips about kids on these rides if you're going out with one of your teenagers. I've made day one the shortest of the days mileage wise and he's coped really well. We have had some of those hills towards the end and he's coped with those as well so it all helps to build their confidence. Now he already knows that there's there are a lot more hill, hilly days to come especially the last couple of days and tomorrow he knows that it's just four or five miles longer than what he's already managed today so that's all good you know you've got to try and build them into it, build their confidence. You don't want to knock them out day one, loads of miles, massive great hills, and then them just hating it. He, he's actually having a great time, which is which is great. He has a great time, that means I have a great time. Um, so, so that's it. Tomorrow we've got more of those. We're going down the, the Icknield Way, the Ridgeway. They're taking the ancient route down the Chilterns, down the spine of the Chilterns, towards Avebury. Really looking forward to it. But less of that. Here we are on the Ignild Way, it's windy, I know it makes a lot of noise in the old video camera. Ignild Way, Upton that way, Wantage that way. On our second day from Ivinghoe through to Upton, the road's quite busy, make sure you pick your route carefully. But once you get to Upton, you get onto the old Ignild Way through to Wantage, that gives you about 10 miles of off-road. The surface is not bad at all, we haven't got any suspension on our bikes and it's absolutely fine. Great views. I took a great photo from the view at the top of Upton Hill. Um, absolutely amazing. So I'll fit all that into the video in a second, but Wantage, that way, gives you about 10 miles off-road today, a lot more tomorrow. Uffington Castle with its earthworks and perimeter going around. Over there, over there. And back to here. And boy, is it high. We cycled from right down in the valley there. It's right at the bottom of the hill. And that's why I'm dripping in sweat. It is really, really steep getting up here. But it's well worth a visit. You've got to come here for a sunset. Sit on this mound where I am now. And look out there at a sunset in the evening. I wish I'd brought my video camera last night. It was absolutely spectacular. Sun goes down. Oh, the whole sky, 180 degrees, 50 mile wide, colour scape, changing second by second, absolutely spectacular, and you can see why 2,000 years ago our ancestors revered this landscape and modelled it for themselves. Now the boy is down there doing sorts of tricks and jumps and things on his bike, which I've told him not to do, but there we go. He's a teenage boy, what can you do? So, yesterday... Uh, Upton to Wantage turned out to be about seven miles of Ridgeway hard tracks. We've come straight up from Bridgecombe Farm, which is a great little campsite by the way. Actually it's a really big campsite, but very, very friendly. We've come straight up and we're heading off west, straight down the Chilterns this morning, on the Ridgeway, all the way into Avebury. Uh, I think, if I've got it right, we've got about 14 miles of track. So I'll report back on that 
let you know how we get on. But really, if you, you've got to come to Uffington. If it's one thing you do in your life, come to Uffington, sit up here for a sunset because it was majestic. Well, this is your Ridgeway track. And what can we tell you? It's a pretty good surface. It's a little bit lumpy and bumpy. And this is the sort of thing you want to know, isn't it? Because you can't check that out on Google Maps because little Google car hasn't been up here, so you can't plonk your little jelly baby man down. Brilliant views all the way along as you go along. Brilliant views. Almost a dead straight track. A lot of it has been flat, as you can see. It's going a bit up and down now. But the surface is good. We've travelled about five, six miles on it now, and it's good. And most of it is a restricted byway as well, which means nothing with an engine. So you won't get lunatics on motorbikes hooning past you. Right, go catch up with a boy. So, now arrived in Avebury, having completed what turned out to be about seven to eight miles of off-road stuff on the Ridgeway, which is fantastic. Barbary Castle, uh, look out for that one. That's a, a good place to look out for as well. And Hackpen Hill, the white horse at Hackpen Hill. Avebury now, where we are, is a village with an enormous earthwork. Just think, all of that was dug with antler picks and a stone circle that goes right around the village. Lovely pub in the middle of the village. Doesn't rip you off too much either. Um, we'll be pushing on through Devizes, picking up the Kennet and Avon Canal. Another eight or nine miles off-road there, down a the towpath. And that's what we like on these rides. You can get away from the traffic. <laughs> Avery is just a crazy place. We've visited loads of historical sites today and this is probably one of the best. What better place can you think of for a stop and a snack? Seventh lockdown on the Cane Hill Lock. Lovely cafe, they don't rip you off with the prices. And look at that, for a view. That's the rest of the Cane Hill Locks going into the distance. And I know the track down the side of the canal here is really, really good for cycling. No trouble whatsoever. So I'm not going to be putting in quite as much effort as Macy over here. We'll roll on down past the Cane Hill Locks and continue our journey. Wells Cathedral, start of day four. Right, I didn't have a campsite around Radstock. You'll have to find one of those for yourself because I've got a little cheat for Radstock. My aunt lives in Radstock. And as much as she was very keen to see the two of us and put us up, boy over there, filling up on ginsters. How did we survive without ginsters when we were doing these cycle rides before? Anyway, my aunt, as much as she was very keen to see us, I don't think she'd be very keen to see hordes of other cyclists knocking on the door, asking to be sleeping on her front room floor. So, uh, today actually turns out to be the least elevation day of the whole ride. 2,711 feet. Little rise up we had this morning from Radstock. Marvellous ride down into Wells. It's a fantastic hill. Took some video, I'll slap that on after this bit. Uh, you've got Glastonbury Tour over to the left, fantastic views, a bit murky this morning but on a nice clear day, see again for miles and miles and miles. We go through the Somerset Levels, clue in the name there, it's level, but the end of the day becomes really really hilly as we head into the land of the hills and we pick up the Great Western Canal. So, Boy Wonder is fully aware, where has he gone, he's over there now. Boy Wonder is fully aware that the rest of the day, the back end of the day, becomes very hilly indeed. So we'll leave Wells Cathedral behind and crack on across the Somerset Levels. Well, for me, it seems like hours ago I was in Wells, and it was. And now we've arrived at the eastern end of the Great Western Canal. Ta-da! Sight for sore eyes, that is. Because after we come across the Somerset Levels, which, as I said earlier, the clue is in the name, it's pretty level, it starts getting quite hilly. And anybody that cycled Devon Cornwall will know just how hilly it is. Now, the ramp coming down to... The canal is pretty much how steep most of the hills are around here, if not more. So we've got 2.9 miles down the towpath, 
boy wonder disappeared into the distance already. He's loving the flat stuff. Um, 2.9 miles to a little campsite called Minnow, so I'll give you a little review of that in the morning. And then we'll carry on the last eight miles, I think it is, of the Great Western Canal, right to its end in Tiverton Town Centre. But uh, I might fiddle in a couple of photos of the landscape around here and some of the hills, um, but it'll be more the same to come as we enter the last two days of our ride down to Perrinforth. But for now, I'll catch up with him and put the tent up, shower, and get to the globe in Samford Peveril. That's where the Minnows is closest to, tiny little village of Samford Peveril. Great pub called the Globe, evidently. Um, yeah. Oh, I'll best go. Day five. Right, so the Great Western Canal or the Grand Western Canal? Um, anyway, I've got to be careful I don't slice it in the canal. Minnow's campsite, what can I say? Really, really nice. Very clean, very tidy, good showers, lovely people, um, not expensive at all. In fact, they donated the pitch fee to the Felix Fund, which was fantastic. Uh, it's quite close to a busy road though. It's mainly a caravan and mobile home site. So, Oh, you know what I mean, camper van. They do get a couple of tents, squeeze you in, but take some earplugs. It is quite busy, the, the roads during the night. Um, other than that, it's absolutely fantastic. And Sanford Peveril, the village just a five minute cycle away, 20 minutes walk. You've got the Globe Pub, really well catered for cyclists. You've got bike racks out to the back. Um, loads of really good food. So that's all good. And as you see, the track service surface on the towpath is really good and we're going to follow this all the way into Tiverton but you can take a mile off the route if you go through a place called Halberton I think you can cut a mile off go cut a corner anyway bridge coming up gotta go see you in Tiverton that's not the important bit the important bit's back down there in the valley that's where Tiverton is 1.5 miles of long drag hill the most aptly named piece of tarmac I've ever come across in my life. 450 feet without any respite. From Tiverton down there. Oliver and I are at the top now. That was a long drag. The morning of day six, very, very light drizzle, but last night it was pouring with rain, blowing a gale. Bikes blew over twice, first time against the tent. And uh, yeah, earplugs, get earplugs. Definitely need earplugs, not just for road noise. The noise inside a tent when it's pouring with rain is like having your head in a bin bag and somebody blasting a shower unit onto you. It's really, really noisy. So we had a pretty awful night's sleep last night. But Chapman's Wells, we can't blame them for that. That's just the way it is. But it's a nice big campsite, well spread out again, good clubhouse, got your basic food, burgers and chips and things, which are very, very nice. Um, it's not expensive and Chapman's Wells, where is it? It is about eight or nine miles directly north from Lauston, Lawston, however you pronounce it around here. So, and there is a pub down the road, the Ask Arms, which is sometimes open, sometimes not, it changes hands a lot. Uh, that's an easy walking distance if it is open, but like I say, they do good food here. Obviously, can't do the video in outside because it ruined the camera. Um, so, we'll push on today towards Perrinport and we'll keep between the 30, A39 and the A30. We're going straight through the middle, lots and lots of up and down, but uh, push on to the finish in the rain. Boo hoo. The earplugs, a definite must have on a cycle trip. So this is David Stowe, RAF David Stowe I believe it's called. It's drizzling with rain, it has been pouring with rain, and this is a report halfway through day six, and we've pitched tent. Why have we pitched tent halfway through day six in a strange place like this? Well, the gear selector cable on my bike has broken. I've tried re-threading it the opposite way round. It's just not having it. So my bike is stuck in gear nine at the back. 
knowing what terrain we've got in front of us if we were to push on to Paranport, Oliver and I have taken the executive decision to pitch tent, eat all our food, drink all our drink and wait for the 7th Cavalry to arrive. And who might that be? That would be the missus. She's on her way down to Perrinport in the car with a bike rack and a couple of other kids as we speak. So, that's that. Was that a backup plan? It wasn't a backup plan I was ever planning to use, but it was a backup plan. Fortunately for us, this catastrophic failure happened on day six. Now we could push on, but I really don't fancy going up all those hills in gear nine at the back even if I'm in granny gear at the front. So I'll do a little, little summary uh, of a few bits and pieces when I've composed myself a bit more. Um, but that's it. Sometimes you set out for an adventure and your adventure turns a bit left field and ends up at the side of the road waiting for the missus. Oh, well, there you go. Um, summary coming up. Time to eat all the food and drink. Well, we're back home and it's been pouring with rain here as well, just as it was at the finish of our ride at Davidstow, our premature finish of our ride in Davidstow. And I feel sorry for Oliver because I'm sure he could have finished that ride all the way through to Perrinport, no problem whatsoever. And to that end, we will be doing the ride again next year. But as all cyclists do, we assess and we modify and we improve our routes and our planning as we go along. So what lessons have I got from this ride uh, that I can take forwards and hopefully you can incorporate into your rides as well? Always make sure you've got plenty of food, plenty of water. It's amazing how much fluid you go through when a temperature starts rising. And when the temperature drops and it starts raining, you need a raincoat, don't you? It was beautiful weather at the start of our ride. As you saw, it ended up pouring with rain. Seems mad packing a raincoat in the middle of summer, but you need to. This is England. Um, earplugs as well. If you've ever done camping, cycling, blimey. You need earplugs in the night time. You need a good night's sleep, and really the only way you're going to get that is with earplugs. Um, and those roads. Planning your route is essential. And we always try and keep away from busy roads, don't we, as cyclists? But it's also the times of the day. Anybody who's cycled between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning on roads will know how busy it gets. Try and avoid bit roads during those times of the day. Try and incorporate some of those tracks that we use, the canal towpaths, the ridgeway type things, and even disused railway lines. They're, they're always good. None on our trip this time around, but I have done those before. If you can get away from roads completely at that time of the day, that's fantastic and try and get off the road again by three four o'clock in the afternoon because it turns into a racetrack again doesn't it as everybody's trying to get home thank you mr airplane for ruining my little bit of video anyway persevering what else have we got we've done raincoats food water roads times of the day really that that's about it that you can take from the, from this one um thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you found it of any use whatsoever, um, I do try and raise money for the Royal Engineers, their charity, the Felix Fund. And if you'd like to make a little donation, that'd be great. They have a website, strangely enough, it's called the Felix Fund. Um, so you can drop them a couple of quid, that'd be great. And look out for my other videos. Uh, I've got a few cycle tours around and about on YouTube. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll be back next year. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.